Hi everybody, it's time for another mail call. Before I start showing you things I got in the mail recently, I want to address something. Many other YouTubers, when they do their mail call videos, they have a pile of packages in front of them unopened that have been sitting, as they say, it's been, I got this one way back three months ago. It's been sitting. I'm finally getting around to opening it. Oh, come on. Who the hell are we kidding? We get mail, we open that stuff up the same day we get it, if not the next day if we're not home. Oh, I can tape it back up later, but no. We're not just like, ooh, big box from Germany. I'm going to sit it on the shelf for a month. Nah, we're opening it up to find out. Maybe there's a gerbil in there and it's going to be dead when we get around to opening it. So, mail call. I'm going to open some things up. You've got mail. Well, this first thing I need to open in, that's our local fire department or ambulance across the street, deciding to go down the road. The first thing we need to open up is something that's already been opened. Alex, a viewer of mine, sent this to me. It's been shown in another video. That's a 64K Coleco Atom memory expansion. I'm still a little stumped on this, how they do it in two chips. I think it's because it's a 41464 that this is four bits and the 4164 is one bit. So if anybody knows the difference, let me know. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But that's pretty fascinating how simple that is. Really, you could breadboard that thing in probably five minutes if you have the chips and the parts. But that's a 64K memory expansion. It takes you to add them up to 128K. Or you can do like I did in the other videos and you could add 120 or 64K on board. The next thing he sent me is this right here. This is not an Atom thing. This is a Commodore 1350 mouse. So what's so special about this mouse, you ask? This is technically a joystick mouse. It only gives you directional indications, up, down, left, right, and the two buttons. It doesn't give you how far or how fast. I'm gonna make an adapter for him that'll let him plug this thing into the Atom and use it on the Atom. I already adapted a Coleco Atom mouse, which was designed, which was basically one of these that had been modified to work with the Coleco Atom. I already fixed that for another viewer, Kevin where I had to make an adapter and add power so that both buttons worked and he's happy with that. So that was from Alex, I'm fixing that for him. Alex sent me this to keep, thank you Alex. The next thing I got is I ordered, this is again for Alex, this is part of the payment for me ordering something for somebody is I ordered this, I'm gonna test it out for him and I'm gonna make that adapter and he gave me that in exchange and I'm going to do a video on this this is an MI is it 386 386 anyways it is a modern version of an old serial port that was made for the Atom a very powerful serial port mind you let's open this up you know, as I'm opening this, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I should have my static guard thingy, which I got right here. Yeah. Let me do that. Just so that somebody doesn't say, Millie, static. And I say, Psh, what's static? I have six cats in my house. Not here at the office, but in my house. Static is a way of life. It's a fun thing. You ever walk across the rug and just so or just socks on your feet? And just walk around a while and build up a really good charge. And then say, hee, 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 hee. Hold your finger and watch the spark go from your finger to the nose. That's a who. Anywho. There we go. This is a serial port. Right here. And a terminal port right here. And a parallel port right here. And that's a ROM. You can drop a ROM in there. What's that ROM do, you say? When you turn on your computer, turn on your Atom it'll boot off that ROM instead of booting off a smart writer. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna actually even give it a shot making a ROM. Who knows? And then that's just a blue wire that goes with it. But I'll give it a shot. I have to set up a my Pi, my Raspberry Pi to be a serial modem. 
Then these are cables for it. See, there's one cable here. What, what, what cables do I got here? Okay, I'm assuming one is parallel. One is the modem. Okay, parallel cable. Then these two are serial. All right. And a cool little checkbox. I like that. And here, if you ever want to do this yourself, you can actually build them yourself. Go to the address there. GitHub.com slash E P E A R S O E slash M I B 238. I said 236. So I'm going to be working on that. Don Lundy is the one who builds these. And he's very, very good at what he does. Very good at it. The ADE that you see in all my videos, he built that one. That was one of the first ones he built too. He built that for me so that they sent it to me. And then I wrote the software that I still use to this day for accessing the images. Someone, I don't know if it was Eric or, I know James, oh, where did we go with this? I don't know if James Walters made one, but I think it was Eric who made another version of the image manager software that lets you, that's a little bit more powerful than the one I wrote. But I like using mine because I made it, you know. So, that's that. I'm going to test that out. The next thing I got in the mail is actually, really, it's not a new thing. This is a thing I mailed to somebody almost a year ago. Well, last August, so what's that? Ugh, seven months, eight months, thereabouts. I mailed this seven or eight months ago to somebody for them to figure out something for me because I was helping him figure out stuff and I said, hey, can you take a look at this? And he said, sure. And I sent it to him. Long story short, sat there doing nothing. And I had to beg and beg. I finally gave up in January. I said, I give up on you giving back. I paid for the return postage and everything. I said, just throw it back. And I mean, I sent him the return postage. If you look, I printed this one myself. And I sent it to him. Nah, I finally got it back. Oh, uh, yay. Yeah, I kept using the excuse of, oh, coronavirus, pandemic, can't go to the post office. Put it in a friggin' envelope. St go out in the middle of the night, stick it in your mailbox, and run back in your house and hide. God damn it. Anyways, here's my Adam Link modem. I have plans for this. This is going to be, if I can pop up, I wanted to show you. Come on, pop. You know, look at that. Look at how stuck it is. I don't think he ever even opened it up. I know he didn't touch this. This is a ESP, what is it, 83? It, it's a Wi-Fi on a chip. And it's going in here eventually. That was what he was supposed to help do. Test it for me. This is... An Adam Link modem is a 300 baud modem. It only does 300 baud. It has lots of severe limitations. This plugs inside the Adam, and this plugs your phone line here. It can't auto answer. It doesn't have a ring indicator, so if somebody calls you, you'll never know. Um, it doesn't have any kind of command set, so the software hacks you actually talk to this 8251 UART directly. But it can do 1200 baud too. Not the software, not the modem, but that can, with the chips on here. So the project I have planned is I'm going to be lifting this out here, removing this, putting a socket in here, and then mounting this in there with some extra power adjusters to get this from 5 volts down to 3.3 volts on here. And I'm going to give this thing the ability to do Wi-Fi and to go on terminal. Because this is a terminal emulator. You can The software you put in here it runs 1200 baud, turns this thing into an AT... Wi-Fi modem that's AT compatible. That goes in there, and I'm going to have me a little Coleco Adam modem thingy with Wi-Fi. So I got a, I got a number of these, but I wanted this one back because this is one of my known I know works ones. And yeah, it took me almost a year to get it back. I'm not the only one that had that problem. Somebody else had that problem too. I'm not going to name names, but <clears throat> damn it. One more thing. Oh, I can take off my wrist guard here now because I feel like I'm being trapped. All right. One last thing. I got this on eBay. Note the professional packaging. That's scotch tape. Scotch tape. Yeah. That's why I ripped this thing open to find out if it was okay inside. That is being held together with scotch. Look, he ran out of scotch tape. And inside, 
Look how much packaging I got. I have me a bag from Dollar General, no less. I got me an airwave that has empty things. But luckily, as far as I can tell, everything survived. So what I got here is I got, as you probably can peek around the bag, I got Timex Sinclair 1000, which is the United States version of the ZX81. Uh, according to him, the keys are a little wonky. I'll fix that. That's no big deal. I didn't get it for this. I got a power supply for the Timex Sinclair 1000. And again, I didn't get it for that. Oh, and I got a cable, I got a, what do you call it, tape connector. I got a Memo Pack 16K memory expansion, which I wanted this. Because I never had one of these in the past. Uh, I'd like to know why the screws are loose. I'll tighten them up. But you can set the dip switches in here and you can hook this on the back of Timex Sinclair 1000 or ZX81 and plug in another 16K RAM expansion behind it and get 32K. So I wanted that. But I wanted this. This is okay. This is another 16K. Let me get this out of the way. Oh, something just fell. So what was that? Oh, something. This is another 16K memory expansion by a company called Data a set. It's still, I mean, the box is really in bad shape, but maybe it was cut to take it out to test it. But it has the original box. Look at that. That is so freaking fascinating. It's even more fascinating in that the drawing that they give is not even for this. It's the drawing is more for the original memory pack. See, let me show you. See the original memory pack, that looks more like they're looking at the original memory pack there. And see this is what I was talking about with the memory pack is you can take this and you can plug this on the back of that. And it's chintzy, but you can now have 32K. But yeah, this this is cool. And now that I see that it's been cut, maybe I can just slide it out of the case. I want to save the box. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? The sticker isn't even lined up. That's made in ink. Now, this is fascinating. When was this made? Does it have a year on it? Mm, oh, no. No year. Barcode, but no year. Look at that small barcode, too. It's not even a proper UPC. But, okay, it doesn't say what year it was made. But, designed for Timex Sinclair 1000, made in England. Excuse me, people. The ZX81, ZX81, was made in England. Why don't you say design for ZX81 slash Timex Sinclair 1000 made in England? This is made in the country where they made and sold these, and yet they promote it as being something made for the American version of it. Yeah, I know, quibbles. They're made in the same place. Timex made them both. I know that. I get it. Actually, no, this one's made in Portugal. But, really? Why don't you just say... Designed for the ZX81 slash Timex Could these plug into the Spectrums too? The ZX Spectrum, the original first one? I don't think so. Who knows? Never had one. Couldn't get past the whole PAL concept of needing PAL. I think the monitor I have now does PAL. But that I got that just for that. I got this at a good price too. I paid that right there I paid 30 bucks shipped and if I look at the box let's see how much was the shipping does he have it on here uh, he, he didn't put the price for the shipping on here but it's four pounds cross country priority mail so that's that should be about seven bucks so I think I paid 23 22 bucks for this I think I got a deal so anywho, other than the Dollar General bag, you can always use a Dollar General bag. I can use more of these. I got a whole thing for, I don't have many Dollar General bags. I got a Walmart bag, but every Walmart bag I have has a whole other So here we go. We have, that came in. We have this returned back to me finally. We have this. And we have all these goodies in the box there. Nice little mail call. And like I said, I don't see how these other people on YouTube, they get all these things in the mail. Things they ordered. Oh, I ordered this like six months ago. I'm finally getting around to opening. Oh, hell no. 
If, you, if you're anything like me, you order something on eBay, you're checking eBay every damn day. You're looking at the tracking. Where is that part I want so bad? You're not like, oh yeah, I ordered it, threw it on the shelf. I forgot I bought that. No. No. Unless you're in grandma's basement, you don't do that. Anywho, my load of rant for the day. This is fascinating, though. And I think I said something about if you know anything, post it in the comments below. But if not... If you know anything, post it in the comments below. Three bucks, not bad. I wonder. I don't even know. I didn't even know this existed. I'll have to put this online and have some people look at it. Anywho, mail call. Have a good one. One last thing while I'm editing the video here. I thought I'd put this on. If you want to send me something, you can. You just contact me. Just contact me. Just go up into the channel. Go into the about. And there's a contact place there. Or, or contact me via Facebook or Twitter or any of the other versions, other ways of getting a hold of me. And... Yeah, I'll make a video of it. If you want me to send it back to you, I'll put it back in a box and send it back to you. Just pay shipping to and fro. You want to send me things because you, you like me and you want me to have things? I'll take them. I'm not picky. I'll take your stuff.